Now, I'd just like to point out something about Dodge as it currently is. You see, what's ultimately going to bring down all of these automotive companies, aside from Dodge, um, is these interest rates. The Federal Reserve continues to raise interest rates, and it's possible that there's going to be another interest rate hike before the end of this year, possibly 0.75 basis points, another 0.75%. Home prices have now skyrocketed, or at least the mortgage for those homes has skyrocketed, and so has the prices for cars. Mercedes, BMW, Audi, most of these uh, companies now, they're, they're demanding 7% interest. They're selling out of all of their available inventory. If you're lucky, their finance is less than 7%, but chances are it's not. Chances are it's going to be higher. Now, you have the option to get your own credit from your own credit union. Here's the problem, though. Most of these people, especially these Dodge buyers, they got shitty credit. And they have shitty credit for a reason. They have shitty credit because they make bad decisions on average. So when you're talking about a 5.82% APR, and then you start going down to the cars that they specifically want, like these scat packs, you're talking $50,000, $49,140 plus tax. When you're talking about these scat packs, you're talking about these wide bodies that are another, what, basically another $5,000 on top, at still at 5.82% for 60 months. You're talking about these Hellcat wide bodies. These things are starting at $80,000. You got to add in another four or $5,000 for uh, taxes, dealer fees. That's another 5.82%. Then you're adding in, uh, what is this? These red eyes, it's $88,000. So you just went up $8,000. Now you're still at 5.82. So here's the thing. Even if you have excellent credit, even if you have excellent credit, you're still facing a 5.82% APR. See, it was really easy to sell this stuff when the interest rate was very low, like it was a 3% or it was a 4%. It was really easy then. But the interest rates going up means it ain't so easy to sell this stuff. And most of the people, you know, and I'm noticing, you know what? Today, I noticed the second video on YouTube of somebody saying that they canceled their jailbreak. In fact, let's just type it up. Let's just type it up. Yeah, see, they only have one jailbreak right there. But no, in fact, no, let's just uh, type it up right here. Uh canceled canceled jailbreak yeah look at this um okay wait in fact wait, wait. canceled uh let's see dodge jailbreak i think i have to be more specific this guy right here what is this oc motivator that's the that's the second video i saw and now look at this this was the other one hemi muscle dodge charger hellcat order canceled now what um, there was, I know I saw a couple of others. What is this? Uh, yeah, some people talking about, oh, yeah, it's online. Okay. Yeah, basically, the only thing everybody's talking about, if they're not canceling their orders, is they're talking about the payments. And even they have to understand that it's not worth it. They have to understand that it's not worth it. Most of these dudes are canceling these orders. They they were really excited to put these orders in. Oh, yeah, you're selling me a, a 840 horsepower uh, charger. Yeah, well, guess what? Your 840 horsepower charger challenger is going to look exactly like all of the other ones that are only 707. Nobody's going to be able to tell the difference on the road, yet you're going to be the dummy stuck paying damn near $2,000 a month for this thing because that's the reality. You've got bad credit, and then on top of that, what, what is this? What is this? Is the new 807 horsepower Dodge Charger jailbreak worth $86,000? They're all saying the exact same thing. I want you to notice something. Ain't nobody talking about Trackhawks no more. Those things are done. First of all, they've moved on to a whole nother platform. Those Trackhawks were shit when they came out because they didn't do anything to differentiate them. They completely screwed up. They completely screwed up, and now it's going to catch up with them because now you can't so easily just sell cheap cars anymore because now all of your APRs are so ridiculously high. In fact, 
I'll tell you like this. A lot of people ordered these Dodge Hornets. They were so excited to brag about. They're like, oh, yeah, we got 14,000 pre-orders as soon as we put the thing up. Yeah, well, guess what? Show me how many of those 14,000 pre-orders actually get sold. Because when they showed this car off, the interest rate wasn't as high as it is now. See, that's what changed in between now and then. I was also having a conversation with somebody about most likely these cars are going to end up having the exact same problems that the Compass had. They're going to have the exact same problem that the Cherokee had. You know, they, they switched to that, that um, nine-speed uh, transmission. Now, this looks like it has a regular uh, mock shifter. But the thing about it is it wasn't just the uh, nine-speed transmission they had problems with. They also had electrical they had electrical problems. Something tells me I don't think that that's gotten much better. So a lot of these cars, these little Hornets, a lot of these things, chances are you're going to end up having the exact same problems you have with the Compass and the Cherokee. And um, the only thing about it is a lot of these sales ain't never get bought because the interest rates keep going up. By the time you see this car in the dealership, and I probably, when they come out, I probably will run down to a dealership just to check it out. The reality is, man... The reality is, especially with the, the, the this new hybrid style technology that they've gotten it, nah, nah, they're going to have some problems with this thing. I can pretty much assure you. I can pretty much assure you. So um, I'm going to provide the link to it, but it's on Motor Authority. So they were talking apparently to Tim Kaniskas, and he was talking about uh, uh, performance and the electric future. Let me explain something to you very, very simply. You can mark my words. Dodge has no electric future. Dodge pretty much died the moment they took SRT. The, the letters, once they took SRT off these cars, that's when Dodge died. Dodge only got into relevance because of the SRT. Before that, those old muscle cars, it was like, yeah, you know, there were some people who wanted them. But the reality is in the digital age, most of those cars, ain't nobody trying to buy those cars. Even right now. The 69 Charger, those Challenges, those Daytonas, those Superbirds. Oh, yeah. If you could get one in fair condition or reasonable condition, there's some people who would buy them, but mostly they're retirees. Dodge needs to be able to sell these cars to my generation, which is millennials, and they need to be able to sell them to Generation Z. Guess what? Generation Z, they barely have jobs. They ain't buying this stuff. They can't. They can't afford it. Then you got after Generation Z, you got Generation Alpha. Generation Alpha right now is growing up. They see these cars. They think they're really cool. Generation Alpha, most of them are going to end up so dumb thanks to the liberal Democrats controlling the education. Most of these kids won't be able to count to 10 without taking off their shoes. That's how dumb they're going to be. Generation Z and most Generation Alpha, they are not going to be able to afford these vehicles at a rate that is going to keep you in business. And the moment that Stellantis, your overlords over there in the Netherlands, the moment they say, you know what, we're not making enough sales, that's when Dodge gets axed. And if they don't cancel the company entirely, what you'll see is the vehicle offerings get shittier and shittier and shittier because they're up against regulations. Now, they said a couple of quick questions because this was actually August 2, 2022. Why did the Dodge Durango Hellcat come back? He said, yeah, we had to change the gas tank. We had to change software. We had to change the evaporative emission control system. Had a lot of stuff to change and everything. Some people really felt cheated because when they ordered a Dodge Durango Hellcat, they thought that those Dodge Durango Hellcats were going to be it. They thought it was really going to be limited. If I had been working at Dodge, if I had been in charge, I would have probably numbered all of those cars. And I would say, yeah, you know what? The limitation of these vehicles is in the fact that every single last one of them that we've turned out is numbered. And right there on the dashboard would have been a number for it, especially if this is going to be the last hurrah and you know you can't build these things anymore, at least like that. By 2030, all of these things basically have to be electric. You already know that's not good for business, especially this business. They say, with the supply constraints and reports of some dealers charging more, no, wait, wait, you mean most dealers charging overcharge? The release of the seven Buzz Model Charging Challenges. First of all, 
they did this thing where they were releasing um, Speed Week. They, every single week they were announcing something new or something like that, or every single part of the month they were announcing something new. They didn't even announce the last thing, which has led some of these YouTubers putting out fake content to say that they're still planning the uh, 900 horsepower E85 Challenger. You know what? If they build it, yeah, okay, that's interesting. But here's the thing. They didn't even announce what they had built as the last vehicle because they couldn't because they're, they've got such a supply shortage. I don't think they're putting out the E85 Challenger. Very well, they could. I'm not going to say that they can't surprise me. But from what I know, I, look at what they did announce. Everything they announced was basically underwhelming. They, they, they come out with a, a $8,000 stripped Challenger that you have to build yourself. They come out with the Hornet. They come out with the, the, the King Daytona which is a charger you ain't never going to see. Because guess what? When these cars come into the dealership, dealer's going to buy them. The dealer's going to buy them, and he's going to keep it right in the back. You'll never see it. It'll be covered up. So when somebody finally does walk in and say, hey, have, did you hear about the uh, Charger uh, Daytona King? It's like, man, I haven't seen one. Be like, oh, really? Well, what's your credit like? Because I got one in the back. You'd be like, no, you don't. You'd be like, yes, I do. And then when you go back there, the dealer says, you know what? Um, I'm willing to sell it for $110,000. That's where all of that interest will either end or that's where the rich of the rich will say, yeah, okay, well, here's $110,000. Give me the charger. Let me tell you something. This is it. This is the end that you're watching. Now, I really had wanted to do a video specifically about this Banshee concept they're showing it off in some of the car shows. Now, I call it a concept because here, see, again, and I said this before, had I been Dodge, what I would have done was I would have brought out the four-door and the two-door at the same time. So this way you would have seen the difference. Now, this is passable as the two-door concept. This is passable. Problem is the majority of the people buying these cars don't want two doors. They want four doors. A lot of these people are using these cars to cart around their family. They got kids and they don't want to have to be picking up their seat and tilting forward and shit every time somebody gets behind them. I've almost never seen people with challengers who have people sitting in the back seat. Chan you know, sometimes every now and then you'll see it, you'll see the kids, but typically you never see the adults sitting back there. Now, granted, the challenger is a big car. It can put the adults in the back seat. For the most part, most of these people, they don't want no damn two door. They want a four door. Now, the Challenger is a retro car, retro looks. That works as a two-door. works perfectly fine. The Charger has been a sales success as a four-door. And you still had these, these old people, oh, well, why did you have to call it a Charger? The Charger only had two doors. Let me tell you something. It's just like with that Mustang Mach-E. It doesn't fucking matter what you name it. What matters is that it's a good product. If it's a good product, you could have named it Dog shit. Like, because I don't know if anybody realizes the word scat means shit. I don't know if anybody understands it. Like, okay, let's look it up because I, I got to prove shit to you motherfuckers. Because I'm, no, that's not true. That's not what I mean. Yeah, okay. All right, hold on, hold on. Let's see. Scat. Let's see. <laughs> oh, okay. Improvised jazz singing in which the voice, you know, like the scat man. <laughs> You know the, the scat, I'm the scat man. You, you know the scat man? Yeah. Improvised jazz singing. Sing using voice of an in okay, yeah. Uh wait a minute. This is weird because I know wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, here we go. Sexual practices related to shit. Uh to chow down on large amounts of big hot shit. Yep, that sounds very accurate in my opinion. So uh, anyway, bottom line is, bottom line is, they're, they're, they're talking about the exhaust. First of all, right there, you saw when they brought this car out, the reasons why this car is going to fail. Now, I'm hearing that they're planning to do microtransactions with this car. Now, if you're not familiar with microtransactions, what it means is that you buy a car that literally has all of the features already in the car, However, you have to swipe your credit card or you have to call in a credit card number or you have to somehow pay in order to get access to features you already have. For example, 
BMW is experimenting with microtransactions, saying that, yeah, your car may have heated, cooled massage seats, but unless you spend more money, you were going to disable them. Tesla was probably the first that I know to pull this bullshit where you had people buying used Teslas that had auto drive. And when the guy bought the car used, it had the feature, Tesla disabled it. And then the guy's like, wait a minute, you can't do that. So the guy sued Tesla and he won. Since then, Tesla's increased the price of their, their autopilot. They've increased it to like $8,000 or something crazy. And my thing is, wait a minute. If I buy this car, every fucking thing in that car should work. But what they're doing is they're tying everything to the internet. So if they tie everything to the internet, that basically means that they, they always have full control over the car. In fact, it may get, and they've made jokes about this, it may get to the point where if you miss payments on your car, they won't need to hook your car up to a tow trailer. That car very well might be able to drive itself back to Tesla or back to Dodge or back to whoever made that shit. That car very well might be able to pull itself out of a parking lot and drive itself back to them. And that's the future. That's the digital age you're dealing with. I'll say one thing about these cars, these digital internet, highly connected 5G cars, it's going to be really hard to steal these cars, which might actually end up being a good thing because most of these bastards out here trying to steal these cars and joyride in them right up until the cops pull up on them and kill them, they won't be able to do that so easily with these cars. If you try to steal a Tesla, internet satellite knows exactly where that Tesla is. You ain't going to be able to steal these things. But here they are busy talking about the sound because that was the most embarrassing part of them unveiling this thing. In fact, I'll go so far as to say... Had they brought it out and they just let it do its EV noise without revving it, they probably would have had slightly higher uh, favorability. If they had said, yeah, this is the two-door, we've got a four-door coming too, maybe that would have helped. The, the, the rumors that they're trying to put out, because they're trying to put out rumors. A lot of these fake YouTuber, fake content makers are trying to put out rumors that this thing is going to do zero to 60 in two seconds and be able to build a Tesla. It's going to be able to beat a Tesla. Let me tell you something. Tesla's got that speed game locked down so fucking well. There ain't nothing you putting out no time soon that's going to beat no Tesla, not for an affordable price. That Tesla's $150,000 for a reason. Or $130,000 and then it goes up to one fifty dollars when you put options in it. Number one, it's prohibitive. It makes it so the average asshole on the street isn't driving around in one. Number two, it's because the, you know, Elon Musk is price gouging. That's number two. But let me just say it like this. This car very well may sell to some people. But some of the reasons I know this car is going to fail. First of all, your core audience for the most part, doesn't have houses. Add in the fact that houses are more difficult to get right now, and your core audience just ain't got that kind of money. Most of your core audience is living in their parents' basements, and you know who you are. Most of your core audience is living in an apartment building, and this car is parked out, or one of these cars is parked outside. They're charging their Challenger is parked outside, and they live in an apartment building. That's your core audience. Without having your own house to plug this thing in, what your core audience is going to find themselves doing is hating the fact that they have to go to a supercharger station or a charging station like Electrify America. What I'm hearing is some of those stations don't even work properly because that's the government at work right there. But in any event... They're not going to want to sit there for two hours and charge their car. Now, with the new charging technology, 800 volts that Hyundai and Kia are putting out, oh, yeah, they very well might be able to recharge one of these cars in about, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes. But a lot of them, they ain't going to want to sit out there. Because guess what? If Pookie and Ray Ray roll up on them and they look, hey, yo, yo, that 50 cents charging right there. Let's roll up on that fool. And then they go up on you because they recognize your car. Your car's sitting there. Or they see the pattern of you coming to that charger. Yeah, 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 that fool come by here every Tuesday at 9 o'clock. Yeah, we're going to get him. We're going we gonna to tighten his ass up. Most of these dudes 
want to be able to get their gas and they want to be able to scurry back to their projects like the roaches they are. Now, I'm not talking about everybody. I'm just saying that most of these dudes, especially these dudes stealing these cars from hardworking Americans and stealing these cars, they want to be able to get that car, get their gas, and they want to be able to scurry back into their hole like the roaches they are. They're not going to want to be sitting out in the open in public for two hours. They're not going to want their obviously noticeable, recognizable car sitting out in public for two hours. They're not going to want that. They're not going to want that. I'll just tell you right now. They need houses. They don't have them. They need the money. They need the credit to buy something like this. Can you even imagine if they released this car right now, you'd be facing a uh, 6% interest on this thing, and this thing's probably going to end up costing like 1500 a month. Now, if it's an electric plug-in, that very well might help because you might end up saving money on the gas. So that could actually help to reduce the costs, which is part of the reason why I'm going to EV is because I waste, I waste a lot of fucking fuel. Uh, I'm sitting in traffic just wasting fuel for two hours a day. So um, that's a problem. So first of all, your core audience doesn't have houses. Your core audience doesn't want microtransactions. Even if your core audience wants the car that looks like this, what's to stop the core audience from simply getting a grill, if you want to call it that? What's to stop the core audience from getting themselves a grill that looks exactly like that, plastiformed? Because I'm pretty sure somebody's going to make it anyway. What's to stop them from putting that on the current Hellcat or Charger that they already got? I've already seen people change their hoods. I've already seen people who think that they're slick. What they do is they take a Jeep SRT just like mine, and they take that bumper off, and they take those wheels off. They repaint their calipers yellow, or they get yellow calipers, but usually they repaint theirs yellow. They add on those ugly-ass Trackhawk wheels, and then they put on the 2017-2018 bumper, and it makes it look like they have a track hawk. Then what they do is they throw a, a supercharger on, usually like a Vortec, which is cheap, but it's it's relatively loud. But it's it's basically a turbocharger, in my opinion, but it's cheap. So they get that, or they get a bolt-on, or in some cases, they stalk the junkyards until they can get themselves a Hellcat engine and then they'll have somebody put that engine in their truck if they really spend the kind of money but most of them what they do is they just get the wheels off ebay in fact well i'll show you right now well what do the ebay wheels ebay let's see ebay uh let's see um jeep oem wheels srt yeah how much it's only like two or three thousand dollars those are them right there came right up look at that that's what they do. They spray paint their calipers yellow, and then they go out and get these wheels right here. $2,800, you get the wheels and the tires. And I have to wonder, where did these wheels come from? For all I know, these wheels could have gotten snatched off somebody's Jeep, for all I know. They didn't get them from mine, because my I purposefully left my wheels rusty dusty, because this way, if you steal my wheels, hell, I'll just go to the insurance company, I'll get brand new ones. Because if I was going to upgrade my wheels, I would still have the OEM wheels. It's just that I would have brand new OEM wheels. And I just put new tires on that car, getting it ready to sell. But I needed to drive it for the next couple of months until these people over at Cadillac hurry up and build my uh, Cadillac Lyric. So this way I can go electric. But yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. That's what they do. So what's to stop somebody from doing the same thing with this car right here. What's to stop them from finding wheels that look like that and throwing that on their car? What's to stop them? Nothing. And first, first of all, I think the other thing that I should say is a reason why a lot of them aren't going to want this car. First of all, they don't have houses. They have no, I guess you could call it safe place to charge it. Their credit sucks. Another issue is you can't modify these cars. Most of the, have you ever gone to one of these car shows and you got to deal with these guys bragging about their car? Oh yeah, my my charge is a thousand horsepower. It's like yeah, whatever. 
if it is, that's, you know. And then, the, you know, they, and then what they have to do in order to step up the bragging, what they got to do is they have to print out their dino report. So they print out the dino report. They open their hood up and they leave the dino sheets there as if you're a fucking mathematician. You can figure out what that shit means. It's just so sad. The reality is you can barely modify these cars. You see these wheels? Those wheels are OEM wheels. Those wheels are probably lightweight, low rolling resistance wheels. And because this is supposed to be an EV, these are probably what's called high load capacity tires. High load capacity tires are designed to handle the tremendous amount of torque coming out of these electric vehicles. Even a regular electric vehicle puts out more torque early on than most of these cars put out even when they're at full bore. So it's just like one of these Teslas. Teslas have instantaneous torque. That's why they're so fast off the line. Bottom line is these dudes ain't going to be able to modify these cars. They're not going to be able to change these wheels to put on those ugly ass Lexanis and those ugly ass other things. They're not going to be able to do that shit with this car. That's just it. You're not, you're not going 22s and 24s. You're going to have to lift this whole fucking thing up. That's going to be a nightmare. And the cars, and let me get, and let me tell you this. You modify one of these cars, that warranty is dead. So that means that when this computer electrical system fries itself, guess what? Oh, yeah, well, you're going to need a new PCM, and your PCM is $3,000. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's not covered by warranty. Uh, as it says here, when you read your stipulations, you're not supposed to modify this car. As you know, the government has also put anti-modification laws out there to make it so if you modify your exhaust, you get a $1,000 ticket that can't be fixed or forgot. As you know, if you modify these cars in certain ways, you're getting tickets that you can't fix and forget. At some of these car meets, you have the cops show up and they literally walk through the car meet looking for illegal mods. And they get them too, because every car meet I go to, Nassau County PD, NYPD, they right behind us. And then what they do is you're basically stuck in there so you can't just get out. So if something happens, you're stuck right in the car show. You can't even just drive out. Let me tell you something. The, yes, there are people who are going to buy this car. There are people who are going to love this car. They're going to keep it exactly like it is. They're going to drive it out in their country roads and everything. But when your core audience is a bunch of egotistical assholes inside the city who are literally causing problems, literally stealing cars, literally carjacking people, literally locking down roadways to do donuts while other people are in danger because they can't get to where they're going. They're doing takeovers on bridges. When that's your core audience, I'm going to make this very, very simple. Somebody keeps asking me, why are you pushing EV so hard on your Facebook? And why are you pushing them so hard on your YouTube? Let me tell you something. It's time for this. What is it? What does Vin Diesel call it? The Brotherhood of Muscle. The Brotherhood of Muscle is now a bunch of fuck boys. It's time for this to die. It's time for it to die a horrible death. And that horrible death takes the form of high interest rates, uncustomizable cars, and electric charging. Electric charging is going to kill this shit. Now, this guy is talking, oh, yeah, well, we were able, we got organ pipes. We got organ pipes. We're going to organ pipe the sound. It's going to go roar, roar, roar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see how far that gets you. And let me just say it like this. When... Nobody can get these loans because they're too expensive and their credit sucks. When these sales do start to decline, which I would estimate will probably be somewhere around 2025, 2026, and Stellantis is looking at their balance sheet, they're going to ax most of these products and that's going to that's gonna put the final nails in the coffin. Without these V8s and without SRT, and with them, specifically without these V8s, Dodge is dead. As far as I'm concerned, the moment they took SRT off these cars, they were dead. They died that day. When I, when I saw Jeep 
uh, when I saw Jeep Trackhawks coming and it didn't say SRT on it, I was like, nah, this shit is done. This is done. Supercharged. I got to read all that? Nah, 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 nah. This shit is done. When they took SRT off these cars, they killed them. When they stopped making V8s, they killed themselves. That's it. That's it. But you'll see. Some people will buy it. It'll work out for some people. But your core audience is already showing resistance to it. Your core audience knows they can't afford them. They have no place to charge them. They have no safe place to charge them. They have no house, most of them. Most of them. I'm not talking about all of you. I'm talking about the ones who live in the projects. I'm talking about Pookie and Ray Ray and Brian the fuckboy. I'm talking about them, not everybody. On top of that, they're never going to be able to afford these loans. And on top of that, they don't like the fact that they can't modify it. Now, Dodge Kaniscus, he said that what he's going to do is he's going to bring some of these cars to SEMA, I think. And he's going to have some of them modified a little bit. And he's going to try to show you different ways to modify them. Let me tell you something, that ain't going nowhere. That ain't going nowhere. It, it, it ain't. People are going to see them, and they're never going to be able to get the sour taste in their mouth that that roar left. They're never going to be able to get that out of their mouth. 